we are going to talk about the first chapter about the uh, fundamentals of computers motherboard concepts and in detail about the memory and memory modules in the first chapter we let's start with the block diagram and find out what a, what are the uh, components of a computer computer is an electronic device which accepts data as input it produces the output after processing the data while processing the data there are a lot of steps in some chapter we are going to discuss that in detail let us start with the block diagram here you can see it's been divided into three basic parts input and output parts cpu and the memory cpu consists of control unit arithmetic logic unit and the registers this input output units to accept and to display to accept the data through the keyboard or through any input devices the data goes to the primary memory it's, it will be stored in the primary memory especially in random access memory that is also called main memory of the system it goes through the cpu whenever the data is stored here depending on the instructions which are already stored in the main memory instructions will be executed by the cpu corresponding data will be taken from the main memory it's going to process it here in the cpu cpu is the central processing unit which is also called the brain of the system it's going to process the data and then the temporarily for intermediate operations registers are used in these registers data will be stored maybe for processing or maybe for maybe after processing the data again it will be sent back to primary memory in case the user wants to get the output on some devices it will be sent to the output device there are so many output devices we'll we'll discuss it a little later control unit it controls and coordinates all the activities in the processing of the data arithmetic logic unit is there it contains two different uh, units one is arithmetic unit which performs arithmetical operations logical unit it performs logical operations like the decision making and registers as i said, uh, said earlier these registers are also called the scratch pad registers say for example some instruction is to be executed based on the instruction there will be some data to be taken from the main memory and it will be brought to the registers initially and these registers will store those data to be processed arithmetic and logic unit it performs some arithmetic operations and logical operations on those data and it will be stored temporarily in registers again only after the completion of the instruction data which is processed will be sent back to primary memory that is called random access memory that is nothing but main memory now input devices there are so many input devices available keyboard is the primary input device scanner is there card reader is there and so many other devices you will have for inputting the data to the system to feed the data to the system especially primary memory is further divided into random access memory and read only memory random access memory it is the main memory read only memory it is also a part of primary memory and this is permanent and this is totally temporary this random access memory is also called a volatile memory volatile in the sense it gets erased automatically when we switch off the system or when the program is terminated data will be stored in memory static ram is there why there's one type of random access memory or the main memory data will be stored in this memory and no need to refresh it every time but dynamic memory we need to refresh it every time to retain the contents of 
the data, retain the contents of the data in the memory. Now, static memory is little costly, expensive, but dynamic memory is not expensive. Static memory is very fast. Dynamic memory, it is slow compared to static memory. The types of static and dynamic random access memories or main, main memories will be discussed in the next part. Read only memory is there. This read only memory is to store the data or store some predefined programs like the BIOS. BIOS is one program which is to instigate the work in a system. Human being will have life. Night when they go to bed, morning when they get up, automatically they start their own work. But the computer when you switch on the system, it is not going to start the work immediately because it has no intelligence. No intelligence means it cannot think, it cannot start the work on its own. When you supply the power, it is like blood circulation only. But when you want to instigate the work in a system, some instructions to be provided to the system, that set of instructions will be present in the read-only memory. That is nothing but the BIOS. BIOS means basic input-output system. That starts the work in a system, instigate the work in a, work in a system. First, it checks all the devices and their proper connections in the system. Once it finds all the devices and their proper connections, it loads the operating system, which is again a software, which is required for the operation from the main memory to the random access memory. After loading the operating system, the system is ready to operate. Now, read-only memory, as I told you already, it is a permanent memory. Sometimes we need to update in the sense to the newer version of the software or the BIOS, we need to change this, we need to update it or erase and then store a new program in the read-only memory, which is not possible in ROM, that is read-only memory. That is why different types of read-only memories are there. One is called the programmable read-only memory. In this the data or the program can be erased and restored only once. Sometimes it is required to update it very often. Then PROM is used only for one updation, but whereas erasable programmable read-only memory, that is EPROM, is to update any number of times, erase it and update it any number of times. Another method is to store the data or the programs by erasing the contents using electrical method and one type is electronically or electrically erasable programmable read only memory. It is going to wipe off or remove the contents of read only memory at one stretch <coughs> and then the new program, new BIOS can be stored in the read-only memory. Instead of erasing the entire thing from the read-only memory, wherever it is required, if you want to change only that part, then electrically alterable programmable read-only memory is there. Maybe a part of it you can take it, erase it or maybe you can modify it and then store it in the read-only memory. These types of read-only memory memories help us in updating to the newer version of the BIOS that is basic input output system that is also called a firmware which will be present in read only memory okay then that can be used for instigating the work in a system as I have already mentioned. Coming back to this CPU control unit I told you already control unit is to control and coordinate the activities and the system. Arithmetic logic unit, it performs arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponentiation, remainder operator, etc. Logical unit, it is for decision making, 
whether the first value is greater than the second value, whether the first value is equal to the second value or some such operations will be taken care by the logical units. Then registers, there will be some set of registers like A, B, C, D, E, F or something like this. Depending on the type of the central processing unit, you will have a pair of registers. These are called the scratch pad registers. These scratch pad registers are used to store the data to be processed and processed. So, these will be used by the arithmetic logic unit for storing intermediate data. Then input devices like I told you already keyboard is there, then card reader is there, scanner is there, voice input is there. There are so many input devices through which you can feed the data. I mean the primary input device is the keyboard through that only you can supply the data in that includes the letters, digits and any other special characters. But sometimes it is required to store some other type of data like the document which is scanned or maybe the audio or maybe video. To supply such inputs there are some other input devices present in the system which can be connected externally. Keyboard is the normal input device, common input device which will be connected directly without which you cannot operate on the system. This keyboard can be a physically connected or maybe a virtually it is connected. Virtual keyboard means you will have only the screen, that screen or the output device which you are using, say visual display unit that is going to be used as both input and output device. The virtual keyboard will be displayed using touch screen option. You can supply the data, you can supply the values or characters or any other input with respect to these special characters, alpha characters, numeric characters, etc. Then output device, output device, primary output device is there that is the visual display unit. First we need to get the output on the screen visually, we need to see the output. Then it is required, if it is required, it can be sent to some other output devices like the printer, like the floppy disk or like any other secondary memories. Data can be stored in secondary memory and the output is also stored in the secondary memory. So secondary memory is used for storing the data permanently but the primary memory is to store the data temporarily. Secondary memory lot of types are there serial or direct access etc. And this primary memory I told you already the random access memory and read only memory.